Hi everybody, uh, I'm here to show you something very exciting that I find very exciting, which is that Intuitive just launched this new robot, it's called the DaVinci 5, which is like a huge evolution of robotics and I want to show and I'm here testing it it was just approved by the FDA a couple of days ago believe it or not so very excited I'm here to test it and I don't disclaimer I don't work for intuitive I have no financial interest of any type intuitive does not pay me has never paid me so let me show you something that I think is very interesting which is how uh, this thing works because one of the issues one of the observations that people had uh, about a robot was the the fact that there wasn't any haptic feedback and now this robot does have that on top of many other things that I'm going to be showing you because I think people really like how these things work so the first thing I want to show you is that how this haptic feedback works okay so what's happening here what I'm gonna do now um, I'm actually gonna grab a piece of rubber and uh, you're gonna be able to see that on the video there uh, I'm gonna film it while I'm doing it. I'm gonna raise my voice a little bit so you can hear me better. But what's gonna happen is like two things. One is actually the, the ability to feel the, the feedback on the sensation of the strength on which on how the tissue gets grasped, the force, so that let's say I grab a piece of bowel, I'm not squeezing it too hard, right? Can determine the amount of the squeeze. You can also regulate the amount of the squeeze, believe it or not. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be pulling on a rubber band. It's going to tell me how hard I'm pulling on it. And the second thing, I'll be pushing on different areas and I'll be able to tell if I'm pushing on something hard or something soft, which for example, with what I do, which is endometriosis surgery, I'll be able to tell if I'm pressing on something hard like fibrosis and endometriosis or something soft like healthy tissue. So let me just sit on this. If you don't mind filming my hands there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab and this is adjustable, by the way, so I can actually orient this you know, for my comfort in any way I want, and uh, which is also makes my, saves my back. And so like, this is how the robot works, right? You know, there's, my hands are on this thing here and my feet, I always like to use you no know, shoes for feel. And uh, these are the different pedals, right? So, but you know, what's interesting, it's like almost like driving a car, which is, the way technology works is that although they upgrade the technology, the, the basics remain the same. So you could buy a, you know, a, a car from 20 years ago and you could drive a, a Lamborghini and they would drive the same way. You know, not at the same speed, not with the same features, but the principle is the same, which is also a safety factor, which is even though the technology evolved, evolves, you could still figure out how to use the thing, even if nobody taught you, which is really interesting. So the learning curve is, there's pretty much no learning curve because it's always the same principle. I mean, obviously if you're driving a Lamborghini, this is a Lamborghini, right? <laughs> so if you're driving the Lamborghini or the Porsche, you know, I, 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 whatever fancy car that you can think of, the, you're gonna know how to do it, you know, and which is really very, it's, it's a safety factor. So I'm gonna be sitting here, and what I'm gonna show you, the first thing I'm gonna grab the rubber band, right? So I'm grabbing the rubber band. So why is that important? Because there's gonna be some future compounds that we release, like now ureters. And to show my hands, as my hands are pulling, I feel the tensile strength of the rubber, which is very, very We've got an insufflator built in. As I'm scratching this, and before that, I couldn't feel that. Before that, I couldn't feel, if I was pulling, I, I would just, visualize the digital image and know that I was pulling. Now, even if I wasn't looking, if I kept my eyes closed, even with my eyes closed, I know I'm pulling on something, which is really pretty amazing. And the second thing that I want to show you is that with my hand, I'm pressing on this, and this is plastic, and I feel resistance, and this is soft foam, and I don't feel resistance. So this is what we, def what, this is what we describe as haptic feedback which is, you know, quite incredible, actually, if you think about it, you know, that the technology has gotten here. Um, and these are just a few of the things, but I wanted for you as a, this is geared towards, of course, my colleague physicians, but also patients, on how the advantage of this type of device. And obviously there's a lot of, what happened is that this is not just a, a technical tool, it's also a, uh, an AI tool, it's a robot, it's a computer that collects the data. And in a minute, we're going to see what else it does, which is quite amazing, actually. And this is just, I'll just show you a couple of the features, but I'm quite excited about, you know, this concept, this principle that, you know, now sort of like we can bring it to the next level and nobody can complain about robots anymore, you know, which, okay. 
Still me, I just want to show you a couple more details about this. So this is the wheel bar and uh, the arms are pretty much unchanged. So anybody who's ever used an XI robot will recognize that everything is the same. Although under the engine, the, everything is changed here because actually the computing power of this thing is actually 10 times greater, 10,000 times greater than um, than the prior version. Can you imagine 10,000 more computer computing power? Um, and it looks like I'm filming an infomercial, but I'm just excited about it. I'm not getting paid for it. I just want you to know that. But um, one thing I want to show you. So these are the haptic, the haptic instruments, but actually you could actually put a regular instrument in it. It doesn't have to be the, you could actually put an old XI instrument and it would still work, but it would not have the haptic. It will not give you the force feedback component. And uh, this interesting part here is that you have like, you know, kind of like a different, a different type of setup here. Uh, but the good thing about it is that you could do a lot of stuff from here and you could actually do telestration from here. So if you're a surgeon and you're teaching your fellows or whatever, you could actually, you know, give them tips from here without even going anywhere else, which is also kind of interesting. Um, and pretty cool, I think. And um, one more thing I'm gonna show you in a second. Okay, continuing with the actual unit. Uh, what's new here, which I think is also, as a surgeon, extremely useful. First of all, insufflation, high power insufflation, closed circle directly here, so you don't need a separate unit for insufflation, big deal. Also, there's a camera here for people who need to do who use laparoscopy, for example, for entrance, for visualization, you're gonna have the camera here set up. And uh, so no need for a second tower anymore, which is really like a game changer, of course, you know, like I just, I think that, and for people who don't know, this is called the intuitive hub, artificial intelligence. Uh, that means that when you're actually um, using this device here, you know, now it's like actually it's, it's off, but what's happening with this, the, with this thing, with the hub, is that you actually, it's gonna give feedback about everything you've done, uh, procedural, analytical, uh, ability to superimpose CT and, uh, and MRIs uh, live. So overall, I would say a game changer. So my final comment on this uh, robot that I just uh, showed you. First one is that it's definitely a huge leap forward. Uh, both the force feedback and the haptic are gonna be a big deal because it can automatically, you know, at some point you'll be able to quantify a little bit like, you know, when you're driving your car and it tells you you're about to hit something, it could tell you you're pulling too much on this tissue or too little and it'll give you like a little thing and uh, that tells you, you know, and kind of warns you. So that's pretty amazing. And the haptic, of course, we know what that is, the ability to touch and feel soft or hard. So that's a huge leap, a major leap. Um, what else, what else do I think? I also think that the fact that you have everything in one console, that you're not going to need like a separate cart for your insufflation and for your laparoscopy, that's also very, very big. I think that's another big deal. Um, it's a huge progress. I feel like, you know, I, I was just thinking about a given example. It's almost like when you have a car and before you have like, you didn't have um, a, a, you didn't have any steering, like any power steering. Uh, and, you, and you got used to it because it, it didn't exist. And now you have power steering and you, and it's like something completely different. It just feels that way in a way, like a tremendous improvement and evolution. So it's definitely a significant evolution. It's not just a, um, a minor leap forward. It's a huge leap forward for robotic. And let's not forget the AI component. I think that probably is the most important thing, you know, because remember, you know, yes, laparoscopy is great, but remember that this is the innovation of this device comes from the fact that everything is recorded. Um, it, everything is quantified, you know, which bas basically, instead of like saying, uh, 
the, somebody's good or not good. These are objective measurements that are recorded and then with artificial intelligence, they're fed back to the doctor and the doctor can improve and also other people can review it. Also with the Connected Hub, I'll be able, as an instructor, I'll be able to teach my fellows even from a different room or a different hospital with a connected hub. So it's really an incredible progress. And whoever is not doing robotic surgery today is missing out and uh, will never be able to catch up because this is uh, the future is the present and that is the reality for what, when it comes to surgery.